Welcome back to another video, everybody. I thought it'd be a great idea to redo my first ever video, the 2009 Honda Accord sedan you see behind me. That is mine. I still own it. Is it worth getting in 2022? We're gonna find out today. I even brought it back to the very first original place. I recorded my first ever video on this channel. Now let's check this puppy out and see if it's still worth getting. Let's start from the front. The same front end, as you can see from the lower portion here, I did hit a chunk of vice, unfortunately, and the lower bumper got cracked. So that kind of sucks, but other than that, oh well. Um, I still have the same gray paint job. Nothing's really special going on in the front. You got halogen low beams, high beams, turn signals, uh, no fake vents going on towards the lower portion down over here. As you can see, the grill itself is also, you know, simple, fairly nice, a little chrome around it. If you got the uh, updated version of my generation of cords, so I believe after like two, 2010 and up, um, you did have a different grill, but uh, mine was the pre-refresh of this generation, so it still looks nice. But uh, yeah, let me let me show you the wheels. Moving on to the side view now. As you can see, my windows are tinted. They look kind of dark in uh, video, even though they're not that dark. The wheels, I do have 16-inch um, steel wheels. They are, you know, what's the, the base wheel is with the hubcaps on it. Not my favorite, but on the bright side, at least it's cheaper for tire replacements. Um, if you do get the V6 or upper trims, you can get a 17-inch aluminum alloy wheel. Other than that, the sharp lines along the side, especially these indents that go in, as you can see right here. I like that, I don't see that on too many cars, so it looks very, very nice. I think the overall side profile is one of my favorites. It looks very nice, especially the three-quarter angles when you go back around this area. And hey, how does my voice sound? Much more clear, isn't it? Uh, let me show you the back now. Fairly sedan-like look. I really don't mind it. Very classic, clean and simple rear end. Clean body lines, the same ones that go from the side. You can see they kind of melt on to the upper trunk area here and the lower bumper area has some cutouts for the uh, little, I don't know, accent design over here. And of course the uh, lower bumper area looks nice as well. Mine's a four cylinder, so it's got a single exhaust outlet. If you get a V6, you do get twin exhaust outlet. And in terms of the taillights, they are halogen, everything. Brake lights, turn signals and reversed. Of course you can upgrade to LEDs, even your license plate bulbs, but I find they burn out very, very quickly. So let me show you what kind of storage you have in this Accord. So open the tailgate area, you have a couple of different options. You can open it from the inside by the driver's door or using the key, press and hold this. It'll unlock that for you. Now, not too much space, but traditional and uh, pretty class leading for the time of era this vehicle came from, even today, to be honest with you. This has about 14 cubic feet of storage space, so definitely not that bad. As you can see, I have these cargo liners. I like protecting my vehicles, so you know, I'm not, I'm trying to have this look in as clean as possible for a long time, but let me show you underneath the hood before we move inside. All right, let's take a look underneath the hood. I apologize in advance. I haven't gotten any food done in a little while since last video. Um, I promise I take care of mechanically very, very well. Um, now, we have the 2.4 liter four cylinder engine. You do have an option of a V6 as well. Of course, it's gonna cost you more fuel economy wise. But for me, I get 177 horsepower and 161 pound feet of torque. Definitely not fast, but definitely okay for the city. Look how nice it looks from this angle, bro. Oh my God, look at that, that's mean looking right there. Um, but if you get the V6, you do get more power, the fuel economy and power for both engines. I'll throw up on the screen for you right now, so make sure you enjoy that. But now I'm gonna go inside and show you what the interior is like if you haven't watched the original video. If you have, you know what it's like, but this is gonna be better quality. All right, time to jump inside. Of course, this does not have any keyless access, but hey, you know what? Super reliable, keys work really well, the keyhole's right there, so. I like the thick handles too, not gonna lie, because my car, I guess, I'm more biased. <laughs> but uh, time to look at the door panel, like usual. Mine has a nice little two-tone kind of uh, gray and black look to it. I, I really enjoy it, to be honest with you. Matches the outside a little bit in some sense. This is like a, a softer kind of material. It's not hard touch, but this is. Now this, I love the soft carpeting, the window switches. They've always been working and reliable for me, so that's good. I have the LED door lights here, which I think look cleaner at nighttime, but you don't have to do that, obviously. They're normally halogen. And even the storage pocket over here is very nice. Now, first glance of the interior, Definitely, you know, a simple uh, warming kind of environment, but let me jump in here and show you what it's all about. 
Man, that plane was coming in. It was annoying. Dog can still hear it. Now let me turn this on. I might have to open the door actually. Beautiful, look at that. Simple, right? But let me open the door so more light comes in. And I'm gonna turn the heat on cause it's cold. Even though it's like May when you're watching this. Okay, now the steering wheel. I think we're dash cam. Invest in one, it's handy. Um, the steering wheel is very, very nice feeling. You know, it's, it's not leather. It's a plastic feel. It's okay. You know, sometimes it does get hot and cold pretty quick, but uh, you know, this is like a base trim Accord. So you can't really expect too much, right? And especially nowadays in Canada, these things with my kilometers on it, you could probably get like 9,000 for this, nine, 10,000 around there. So anyways, um, I like how the volume controls are here cruise controls are here it's simple nothing really else to talk about towards the left portions even the layout of the dash it has that kind of two-tier split you know the grays at the bottom and then the darker colors up top so it looks nice in my opinion even the vent style it's uh you know not just a boring old rectangle i think it looks nice as well uh, vehicle stability assist a little cubby i use it for a air freshener here your uh, gauges simple they have everything that you really need uh, you know, for them to show you your, your tack, your coolant temperature, speed, and gas, of course. And when you close that up, that uh, indicator goes away like so. And uh, it, of course, is going to show you whatever gear you're in. So that's always nice to see as well in the dark and at nighttime. Your center portions, the vents, same usual. The hashtag, save the knobs, you know I got to say it. We started this video back in 2020 saying that as well when I went to the interior. I love the HVAC controls, knobs for the temperature, the airspeed, direct your airflow, your vents, um, your audio system. It's nice. It, it does what it needs to do. You know, you do have auxiliary, but no Bluetooth or anything. Upper trims did have one, I believe, like, like with the leather EXLs and higher base loop, but mine doesn't. Um, you do have a little cubby here for a, a small storage area and more beneath that. It's not the biggest amount of space, but definitely better than nothing though, right? The shifter area, I kind of like how it's uh, got that little gray strip. It kind of reminds me of the outside paint color. I, obviously, this isn't color matched. I think I just got lucky because my, my car is gray. This is the same material as the steering wheel and, and the dash. So it's all, you know, the same material. So it's easy to shift um, a little coin tray over here. Not an ashtray, of course. It says that right there. 12 volts. Your parking brake is a nice grippy kind of uh, feel. The coverable cup holder area, which I personally love how it's like that open it up and you get two tier, one deeper than the other for taller cups and et cetera. Fits Tim Horton's cups easily. Uh, Tim's please sponsor us. I have coffee every day. Thank you, appreciate it. The center armrest, same material as your door panel kind of uh, uh, cloth. You know, it's nice and soft and fuzzy. And once you open it up, a decent amount of storage. You have your auxiliary right over there and a 12 volt. And uh, yeah, so it's decent amount. And this also slides up so you can pull on this and, and it can kind of extend a little bit and it's a better armrest in that sense too. If you can see that, there you go. So yeah, no, it's all, it's all nice, you know. Um, I don't have any sunroof on mine. It's just a simple car. I've never really used a sunroof even if I'm driving Velars or other Rovers. So that's fine with me. Uh, but if you want one, then obviously you have to, uh, you know, get a higher trim level. These seats, they are super comfortable. Uh, they kind of look like very old school, boxy, cushiony kind of seats. And, and they are, you know, they're, they're pretty comfortable for long trips. And, uh, you know, I've taken road trips in my car a lot and, and it's definitely not bad at all. And you know, one thing I really love about these cloth seats is that this cloth from back in the 2010s, kind of, it, it feels way more softer than cars with cloth nowadays. Current cloth feels very, very, um, rough and kind of you know not so soft but this stuff is and i dig it now let me set my seat where i am i'm six foot one i'm gonna be comfortable driving in this position i'm gonna go to the back seat and show you how much space i got let's go all right so the same kind of setup nothing really to think about this plane see you later alligator anyways let me jump in here uh door panel looks basically the same this is still a nice kind of soft touch material, cloth material, hard touch, window switch. Uh, you know, these ones I've noticed, this one doesn't have any lighting on it, so at nighttime you're not gonna really see uh, any glow in the dark kind of reflective material. 
kind of funny, but uh, yeah. All right, so um, you're probably wondering, wow, your car's so clean. I keep it by using these tux mats over here. They're not obviously sponsoring this video. I wish they were, um, but these things are awesome. Like look at the protection they get all the way up to the side here. I backed in this car and shampooed it and then I put these mats on and these mats are super easy to clean. Anyways, I have a pretty reclined kind of uh, seating area. Here's some POV look at my knees. I have a decent amount of uh, knee room because the seat kind of goes in like that, as you can see by my hand uh, direction. So quite a bit of knee room, leg room. It's a little bit more on the tight side over here, but you know, definitely doable for decent enough road trips. No vents, no uh, power outlets, nothing really else to talk about. The seats, they're comfortable, same kind of cloth material. I really don't mind them. Super squishy uh, armrest cup holders, two different sizes for different size drinks, so that's cool. And aside from that, you know, we got a couple pockets behind your front seat, some cleaning material, chemical guys, let's go. And yeah, I wanna go for a drive now, and uh, <laughs> not really much to talk about for the drive, but you know, what do you think about this car, Jimmy? It's better than what I feel like some Land Rovers. It just feels way more comfy here. Even though those things are like 100k. Uh, there you go. You heard it here first. Jimmy thinks that the uh, Honda Accord from 2009 base sedan is more comfortable than a Land Rover. Let's go. <laughs> All right, here we are back out on the road. Last time I did this, I did an acceleration test. Now my car is not fast at all. I'm just being honest. If you get this car and you want to be wowed by how fast it is, that's that, it's going to disappoint you because that's not what it's meant for. What it is great for is it's a reliable daily commuter, pretty decent on gas and a decent amount of space if the Civic is too small for you. But for shits and giggles, I'm still going to, you know, do a little acceleration test just uh, to show you guys what it's all about. But uh, yeah, let me do that. Is everybody ready? Jimmy. Okay, three, two, one. <laughs> so slow. Wow. It seems like, it sounds like we're probably going fast, but yeah. We weren't going too fast there. It took a little while. You're definitely not going to win any drag races with this car. Um, what you are going to win is savings at the fuel pump and reliability wise. In terms of my owner's perspective now, um, I've owned this car for since 2019, so three years. I had about 65,000 kilometers on it. I don't know how many miles that is. I'll put it up on the screen, but uh, you know, and now it's got 100 and almost 10,000 kilometers on it. So I've driven it a fair bit over the last three years and it's been a solid vehicle. It's never really broken down on me in any way since then. And we have some pretty hard years here in Calgary as well. Um, it's been a great, reliable vehicle. And I've only really put money into maintenance, which I follow the Honda, uh, you know, factory uh, manufacturer maintenance schedule that they put. You can look for it online, uh, depending on what country you're in. Uh, HondaCanada.ca here usually has uh, has all the maintenance schedules for all the vehicles. So I follow that, and that that's really about it. Um, I get the battery check before every winter time, and I put a new battery in here. I think 2019, the year I got it, and so and that's been solid the last three years. It's a Honda genuine part. I try to use genuine parts as much as I can. Um, as I get a discount, you know, if you don't get a discount, I understand that you want to use aftermarket parts. So I don't blame anybody if they want to use aftermarket parts. It could be cost effective and some are really good quality as well. Um, gas wise, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's prices be going up, bro. So it's costing me a little bit more than when I first used to put into it. But even then, um, I usually get roughly around 500 kilometers in the city. And uh, that's not too bad for a car this size. And a Civic would obviously get around the same amount or a little bit more sometimes with a smaller tank, but it's also a Civic. I like having more space. It's pretty spacious in these back seats, you know what I'm saying? You got quite a bit of space going on, bro. Uh, but other than that, you know, everything else is, is, is pretty, pretty solid. Um, I think the car keeps a pretty safe, simple design. And because of that, even in 2022, and I'm sure further beyond, it's looking pretty clean and it will, you know, be a pretty modern looking design for what the car really is. And um, I'll kind of, uh, I guess, leave it there. You know, I hope you enjoyed the recreation of my first ever video. I really, really enjoyed uh, making it for you. I thought it'd be a fun thing to even go back to the original spot where this channel first got started. 
And so, yeah, without further ado, I'll see you on the next one. Have a good rest of your day. Peace.